Hello everyone, it's Dio from Firm of Fair Gaming, bringing you another World of Warcraft video. Today we are bringing you a 20 Plague Fall that was done this past week. So of course it is a fortified, necrotic, sanguine dungeon. Again, this is a 20 Plague Fall. We were actually able to complete this dungeon on time and we did it by skipping two lieutenants. So as you can see there at the start, we go through with the initial invis past the mushroom room into the middle to clean up the ads here. So we're just gonna take down the slines. Great job kiting there by the tank. And we're just gonna blow this guy up here. And what was interesting is, is we skipped uh, Lieutenant Varth. This was not anticipated by the group, uh, even though the MDT was linked before the, the start of the pull. So that's the mythic dungeon tool, which most tanks will use to outline their route. So that was done, I thought, and so did some of the other DPS that we we're going to pull Varith, but we ended up skipping it, which was fine. Um, as you can see, we weren't too sure when we we're going back. Uh, there was a little bit of a language barrier between us and the tank, I believe. Uh, he only spoke Spanish and we only spoke English, so it was a little bit problematic, but you know, it's fine. It happens. Happy to have a group and play together. So here we go. We're doing this big pull. So pull everything on top of the barrel. It's going to blow up, give us some free damage. And some of that trash, as you know, when it gets low, it starts to run away. So here we're doing a pretty good job of keeping things out of Sanguine and dodging the spikes as they come up. Unfortunately, he keeps wanting to spit while he's stuck in Sanguine. So he got a fair bit of health back there that we were really trying to avoid. But our tank here does a great job of kiting, dropping his stacks, and letting us get back on top and knock things down. So here again, that's the third time that he just unfortunate that he's getting a spit off while he's um, stuck on the Sanguine. Our healer happened to go down there. So we got a battle res off because of course we skipped the mushroom room. So we don't want to really have anybody release because they either need to invis past it or we'd have to wait. So really when you do that skip, you have to wait for a battle res. Um, and hope that the rest of the team is able to finish the pull without going down. Because if everybody goes down, then it's pretty much the key is burned, especially when you get to the, the higher levels. So here, this particular pull is fairly annoying because there's a lot of disease buffs that come out from the slimes. So we do our best to kick all those. And really, we want the red slime here because it gives a haste buff. So we're trying to kite it back. But it goes down, so our Necro is going to eat it to give us our haste bus, and we're just going to go back and fight the boss. There is a strategy where you would pull that the red slime all the way up to the boss, and then kill it in this room, and then you could stand on top of it and DPS, and everybody would get the haste bus buff. And when the Necro Lord attacks or does his thing to the slime, Basically, it turns it for us, so then it would also heal and do a little bit of damage to the boss. But we didn't bring it all the way back. It DPS was a little bit too aggressive and it died down there, which was fine. We still have the haste, so we're just doing our bit here. We have one slime that came out, and of course, we have to remember the big guy is still on the other side of the room, so we got to watch on the stomps so we don't get knocked into him. You can see him there at the top there walking back and forth, so we stay to the left side of the platform, and he's going to go down with only us uh, killing the the one slime or rather summoning the one slime so we pretty good dps there and again it was a fortified so it didn't have crazy amounts of health and now we're off on our way to the second boss here where we're gonna get the plague rock got a little bit of free damage on it before bringing in the rest of the trash um and our tank is he's druids were phenomenal or are phenomenal for necrotic weeks and our tank did an excellent job of managing his stacks and and kiting um, as he needed to. So here we're going to go into this. This is another dangerous pull because they, these three cast that um, corrosive junk, I believe it's called. So sometimes melee DPS, if they're not careful, can get multi many, many stacks. So here I have two on myself here. So I'm trying to fall away because I don't need more. Um, and you don't want to, like the healer can only cleanse so often. So you got to watch your own stacks. And if everybody's kicking as often as they possibly can, then you can actually mitigate a lot of that and, um, save yourself and your healer some trouble. So here I'm at two stacks already fairly quickly. So I'm going to try to back up. I think I go down here, unfortunately, just because of how many stacks I had and the damage that was going out. 
the healer just wasn't able to keep up, which is fine. As long as the group doesn't go down, it's all good. So here they're just tidying things up. And again, I can't release because you have to kill the second boss before you get an updated spawn point. Um, so again, if I was to release, then I would have had to invis past the first pull or the mushroom room, as well as it would have been a lot longer for me to get back engaged in dealing damage. Uh, here, we're just gonna do this simple two pull. So the thing is to remember is you have to kill the purple slime first due to the damage reduction aura that it has for everybody else. So if you're just on the caster here, um, the plague binder, you're wasting your time. So you want to make sure you kill the purple ooze first and then kill that. And then also I believe we can even get a little bit of a damage reduction there. So here we're gonna do this big pull. So hopefully this one, again, the only thing you need to worry about is with the Sanguine, um, is when he goes to spit, is try not to have him near the Sanguine. Um, otherwise he'll heal unnecessarily, which is what we had happen in the previous time that we pulled one of those guys. Here we did much better. It actually died first, and then we're just gonna clean up the guys that run around. And we're gonna do a second skip here and skip this um, Lieutenant as well and come down onto the Tentacle here and just DPS that. So for here, just keep in mind that once he starts to get low and you're going to have those flag borers blowing up there, you want to stun him, hit him around 50% before he basically picks somebody up. Because if he picks somebody up, the plague borers are going to blow up and basically whoever he grabs is going to die. So you want to preemptively, as soon as you see him select somebody that's not the tank, is interrupt, stun, whatever, um, fear, some sort of CC so that he doesn't end up picking up a DPS and you're, everybody gets to live. So now you, I think they fixed it where you only get six plague bores now. So before you would kind of keep this guy up or kite the plague bores as often as possible. Um, but because you only get six now, you just kind of use them as is. I can't remember what happened there. I think our tank just said let the stacks get too high um, and I wasn't too sure what happened there. This was an interesting pull. The first time I'd seen this, which was actually pretty good. So we're going to pull that and the DPS is doing what they're supposed to do, which is waiting for him to set up before we jump in because you don't want to unnecessarily jump in there early and really mess it up. Uh, so now we pulled everything into this corner and we're just going to DPS it all down, uh, and try to keep things off the sanguine once stuff starts to go down. So we're going to manage our kicks to interrupt the casters to make them move. And there we did a good job of pulling the, I can't remember his name, they're going to call him, the guy that spits, that's all I'm going to say, is to pull him off to the side there. So he wasn't standing in sanguine when we knocked him down. And now we're going to go off and grab the next lieutenant, which is pretty standard um, for most groups. Although... After watching some of the Mythic Plus tournament on the weekend, it was uh, pretty crazy some of the stuff they could do. But this is pretty standard for most pug groups, is to pull this guy, get the buff, and then go back and kill the boss. So here the tank is calling out the kicks as we need them, because of course Inferno needs to be kicked. So the group is doing well. So generally, the best strategy on Arkaloth is to have four people in melee and one at range, because then they will always select the range for... The, I'm going to call it Scorched Earth. I think that's what it's called. And then only one person has to move. Whereas if you have multiple range, uh, then you really, then like many people could potentially have to move. So by only having the one out at range, then it fixes on that person. And only one person has to move and potentially lose DPS rather than many people. So here we're going to kill that red slime again and get the debuff with our, from our Necro. So we're going to have haste buff, pull the boss back over. Uh, we could have pulled them actually onto the ooze to get that healing for the team as well as a little bit of damage onto the boss, but it's not that big of a deal. We're just going to use the haste and basically blow it up, max out our DPS as much as possible here. Of course, you're going to save heroism and only pop it right now as you go in here and he summons the ooze that you got to blow up before it blows up. So we pop hero right there, kill the ooze, and then we're going to be back on the boss. We were trying to get the purple ooze off to the side and CC it because again that purple ooze has the damage reduction aura so when it's near the boss you're dealing less damage to it so we tried to get it off to the side to CC it but it just wouldn't get away from the boss then we just DPS it down and we're going to try it again when we get over here so again we have to kill the ooze that's going to explode and then we need to deal with the purple one so as you can see it's CC down in the corner there um 
but I believe it comes out here. It got clipped or something. No, I'm thinking of a different pull. So here the ooze is trapped off the side. So we're able to just finish off the boss here without having to deal with that, uh, the damage reduction aura. So it was actually really good. There was another group that I was with that I got confused with where they tried that and it just kept coming back into the group. So there that actually saved us a decent amount of time because again, you can kill the boss that much quicker and you don't have to worry about the damage reduction aura at all. So that was pretty good here. You had that little ooze and it drops the sanguine as you can see in the back there. And we were able to, I believe the death knight death grip the back right before it died so that it killed, so it was killed away from the tentacle because the tentacle, if you kill that ooze underneath then the tentacle will just heal up and then just got, just prolongs the pull a lot. So we also pulled over a couple of guys that were in front of this pull just to make it easier. There's a couple of guys that were at the start of the platform so you can like moonfire them or just give a little shot to them to pull two of them over. And then that makes that middle platform a lot easier because you don't have to deal with as many people. So now we're just wrapping up with the trash here. Got that under control. Now we're going to pull the next Lieutenant. Um, so it doesn't heal from Sanguine, so it doesn't matter if this mob dies. Uh, we're going to keep it away from it anyways, but it doesn't heal from the Sanguine, so you can just DPS as per normal. Which is nice, because if these healed, then it would just be something else that you would have to worry about. So you can pull trash on top of them during Sanguine, they don't heal, and they don't bolster during bolstering weeks either, which is nice, although... Uh, bosses will bolster, which is kind of interesting that they would both bolster and heal. So all right, at the moment we're getting into the tail end of the dungeon here. So we got 14 minutes left, which is a good timing when you're approaching this boss. Um, the DK and I here are just chatting. We're discussing how interesting the boss is going to be because it has both the increased, um, it's got the movement slow as well as the 50% reduced healing. So it's going to be an interesting boss. We uh, hadn't pulled one like this before, so it'll be fun. I know that there's lots of groups that do it all the time, but it was a first for us because the last boss is actually quite healing intensive. Here we had a little bit of a mishap because the stealthlings got out and we and it went towards the big plague uh, belcher there. And so they accidentally got pulled. So we had to use a few extra CDs here, but the group does a very, really good job of CCing and adapting to the situation. And their tank did a great job of pulling them off to the side. So it was some additional percent that we didn't need as well as some additional time we had to spend killing them. But the group did a really good job at, um, at handling that. So here more stealthings got out and it's hard to keep stealthings from getting out. We only have so many stuns. Um, so basically when they do get out, you just need to CC them in some form like a typhoon or something like that to stop the channel that the stealthlings are doing because it's when the channel gets off that they jump on somebody and pretty much one shot whoever that is. So if you can interrupt that, then they just become like a regular trash. They still hit and hurt, but they walk after after people in the tank and get aggro and so it just doesn't jump on a DPS and merc everybody. So it's actually pretty good. The Druid's good. He's got the Typhoon for that. So it was pretty good. We handled that pretty evenly. So then, of course, this boss is pretty standard. Stack on Venom Blade. Uh, get the stun debuff. You move out when you get stunned. And then you just got to collect, collect up the Assassins. So the Warrior, I actually have pretty good mobility here because I have both um, the Heroic Leap as well as my Shadow Step ability, my Covenant. I'm a Venthyr, so I got that. I know that's not the name of it, but I just can't remember what it is right now. Um, so again, here we go. Just quickly gather them up. So we got pretty good ways to draw out all the trash and then just bring them all in together. And we're just going to nuke it down and then nuke down the boss and get into the last part here. So just wrapping this up. It is a little embarrassing. I can't remember what the, that is. Maybe it is just Shadow Step. I forget. But it's moving into the last room. We needed one slime. And I'm just going to pull that. Oh, it's Door Shadow. So we're just going to pull this. Uh, we got the one slime, so that's all we needed for the percent. If we hadn't have had that extra pull with um, the Plague Belcher, we would have needed more slime, so we put, would have got all three. Um, and then we would have even got a haste buff for the last boss, but we didn't 
ended up pulling all three because we just needed the one. So we're just going through and the trash here, you want to make sure that uh, you can pull them out of the sanguine because every single one drops the sanguine. So we kind of skipped the front there to go around the side. So we could wrap that stuff up. And now we're just going to give us a little bit more space to work with if we need the kite due to the necrotic as well as move the trash around and get it away from the sanguine. So we actually were able to do pretty good there. As you can see, he did not stand in sanguine. So we were able to get the trash out of the way before we killed it all. So this guy here never actually healed from any of the sanguine because that could delay you as well, especially if he does his um, his like a uh, step or whatever when he goes invisible. If he was on top of sanguine, he could still be healing while he's doing that. So now we're into the boss and now we're up into all sorts of fun. So... Here we are, just, it's pretty standard here. It's not too crazy. The uh, idea here, especially with the 50% healing reduction, is you want to one phase it. So you only want one cast of the infectious rain. If you get two, it is going to be incredibly problematic. So we're getting a second dose here. Um, and as you can see, everybody is dropping quite low, but uh, everybody's using their cooldowns appropriately. We even lost the tank right there, but the DK was able to battle resum. Um, and then during this phase, of course, you're able to move around. As long as you're not in combat, you're able to move around freely. So we're just, again, here comes another interesting phase with the Infectious Rain, but we've popped Heroism now, so we should be able to one-phase this, which will make our life a lot he easier for the healer. Able to one-phase it there, which was great. Um, everybody is using their personals as often as possible, especially with a 50% damage reduction. You want to utilize every personal that you have. So I was definitely using Ignore Pain. I even was using my Gift of the Naru that I have because I'm a Jirnai warrior. Um, and I, you know, Frenzy Regeneration here and Rallying when necessary. Like all cooldowns were needed to help with that 50% damage reduction. And we're even, as you can see here, we're going to get the boss here all the way down. So that was a 20 Plague Fall with two lieutenants so it was the first time i got the playful i've had a couple failed 20s but it was pretty interesting it was a pretty solid run we still had four minutes left on the clock which was really good and it was an interesting strategy uh skipping the two lieutenants there again the first time i've seen that for a plague fall um for just me personally so it was a lot of fun so that's what we've taken if you have any questions or comments or feedback about the run um, if you saw anything that I didn't see that you want to chat about, let us know in the comments below. If you're curious about uh, anything about the Warrior, because that is what I play. If you have any questions, I do have a Venthyr guide that is on our channel. But if you have any other Warrior questions that you have, just put them in the comments below and I'll answer them as I can. Or if you have any tips and tricks that you saw that I missed that I could have used to make my game better, I'm always interested in learning that. Let me know as well and I would be greatly appreciative. As always, we appreciate any likes and subscribes. Um, and if you are new, please subscribe. We have a lot of content that we bring on quite a few games, so we would love for you to join us. Also, we appreciate any shares as well. I always forget about that one, but we'd appreciate all that as well. As always, I appreciate your time. Appreciate your, your comments, your feedback. Any questions, just let me know in the comments below. Good luck, everybody, and I hope the next week in the vault tomorrow because I'm putting this out on a Monday, brings you everything that you're looking for. And next week is a good push week for Mythic Plus. So I'll have a video out for that again tomorrow as well. So good luck, everybody. Hope you enjoyed the video and we got more coming for you. Good luck and have fun.